A year and a half ago, I stood at this very place with a dream. And today, that dream is a reality. Come with me, and let's share a story together. And so we began a dream of trying to find a place where God wanted to land us. One of our hotel brokers was looking for a hotel, a, a vision that we could fulfill. And in about of March of 2004, he had found a spot. And he said, it's the old Travel Lodge Hotel. And Bob turned to me and he said, Eric, it just needs a little work. <laughs> but you know what? There was a vision and a dream in my heart. And once I saw this place, and I stood out on the fish bridge out here, and I looked over the, the freeway, my heart began to move as I stood on that bridge. And I looked up at the sign, and I realized that there was a place that we could open up where lost people could come in and we could give hope to a weary traveler. And rather than go build a place where no one would come, we could just take over a place that everyone was coming. And so in June of 2004, you know the story, we bought the place and we possessed the land. The police department informed us as we got onto this property that we had just bought the largest methamphetamine house in all of Portland. As the police officer shared that with me, he reached out his hand not knowing who I was and said, so who are you? And I said, I'm the pastor of the largest methamphetamine house in all the <laughs> God put in my heart that what we needed to do was to build a place of presence here. A place where God could show up. A place where he could come and he could restore. A place where broken lives could be mended. And so we built several places here. The very first area that we focused on was the rooms. And many of you have toured through our rooms. And we have two buildings of, of rooms that are done now. And more construction is happening. And, and what I see is amazing because as people came onto this property, they began to work. They began to do landscaping. They began to volunteer. And people folded laundry and, and landscaped and did construction. And all of a sudden, we began to see a dream come about. And all of a sudden, the bar downstairs became the children's center. I love that. Minors are definitely allowed. <laughs> and happy hour has a totally different meaning. <laughs> and then there's a youth center downstairs, and youth are coming in. And, and, and God called us to pay attention to the details. The nicest rooms in all of Portland exist right here at this hotel. And people will ask, why did you put so much? Why did you put so much detail into this? Let me tell you why we did that. We did it because this does not belong to us. It belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is God's hotel. And God said, when somebody comes into your hotel, in as much as you have done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. So where did we want to put Jesus to bed that night? I wanted to put him on a pillow top mattress. <laughs> and so when we sweep, we're sweeping Jesus' lot. When we wash windows, we're washing Jesus' windows. This place does not belong to us. The other thing that we put in was sacred grounds downstairs. Yeah, this is a Christian coffee shop, and we are so glad you're here. It is a place where relationships can be formed and community can happen. And the cool thing is it's happening. God is forming some wonderful relationships in sacred grounds. We also put in a Christian counseling service called Family to Family Counseling. And Family to Family Counseling is a place of care. It is a place right here in our garden area where we have three rooms that are dedicated towards a counseling service. I think that's awesome. When all of a sudden now we've got a place of community and we've got a place of care and, and that strategic partnership is working so well. Then we took a look around and we said, Father, we don't want to just stop there. We don't want to create just a place of care. We also want to create a place of healing. And then we began Freedom House. Freedom House is a 501c3 nonprofit discipleship program that builds consistent Christian character in the lives of men who want out of drugs and alcohol and street life. I'd be dead. Uh, I'd be dead. I'm thankful to, to Jesus and, and to Freedom House. I'm thankful to God that he's got programs like this for, for men who have life controlling issues like I had. And so when they come in here, they're coming in and getting into a highly structured and accountable environment where they're fed uh, good, solid, spiritual uh, truth uh, every day. The other day we walked out and they were all back uh, behind the property and they were weed whacking and pulling and getting things ready for the bark and pulling out weeds and all kinds of stuff. We walked back there and it's pouring down rain. And they were just, they were just cleaning things up. And it has become a place of healing. 
Freedom House is truly a place where people can come and get free. The other strategic alliance that we formed was with my father's house. That he is saying, I want to build a house where my presence can be. And all of these partnerships come together. When I met Pastor Eric, we talked about what he wanted the hotel to do and what he wanted that to look like. And it came really in line with what we were doing here, housing families and keeping families together. And so instead of duplicating, we decided to partner together and use the ministry of the hotel to benefit the ministry of my father's house. And see, it's just not my father's house and Freedom House and Family to Family Counseling Services. It is us as the body of Christ laying down our own turf and simply saying, let's build his turf. We're doing missions work. We're the Urban Serve team and we came from different churches to come with Eastside and to team together and to just do outreach with like cleaning stuff up, making it look nice and help them out and then reaching out to the community. Let's build his kingdom. Let's form strategic alliances so that something great can happen. And I will serve you and you serve me because you can do what I can't do and I can do what you can't do. But together, when we come together, we will do great things for the kingdom of God. Because what we're about here is building people in order that they can go touch the world. Our mission here at Eastside is very clear. We are not about building a bigger mousetrap. We are about building bigger people in order that they might move into the kingdom of God and be kingdom makers. How hungry are we? How hungry are we to see the presence of God move beyond ourselves? Because Jesus said, I want you to build a place for me. And that's what we're going to do here at Eastside. We are going to build a place that's not about Eric or about Jamie or about any of our worship leaders or about any of our pastors. It is going to be about Jesus and Him crucified. Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Actually, I'm a Katrina victim, and oh, I really? came here um, to stay at the hotel and everything else, and ever since then, it's been our home. Uh, well, I've seen people here, they help me. Right now, I'm homeless, and they put me up in the room for a couple of months so I can get my body back in shape and get back to work. It's a, it's a family, but it's also a ministry. It's also a uh, business. So it's the best of three worlds. I think because of our culture, we, you know, we get used to segmenting our lives. So we think that's ministry, this is business, but it's here it's together. And it's really amazing, really amazing how it works. Can I believe that we are his hands? If Jesus commanded us to go to the world, can I believe we've heard the call? Whose prayers will heal this world? whose hands will nurse her pain, whose compassion will bring them to the cross. Religion derailed us, our agenda has failed the loss, but I can believe it. Yes, I can see it. I can believe. Can you believe? Can you believe? The time is now.